Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And I was out for a walk, and I saw uh, a Wowhead update that there was more patch notes and changes coming for 9.1, and my walk quickly turned into a run to get home to get this information to you as soon as possible and start talking about it because, yeah, there's actually more. I know. I can't believe it either. Um, there's a lot of changes coming for PvP, and there is quite a uh, an interesting one coming for Mythic Plus uh, and just gear in general, uh, which I'm curious to talk about and really get what to get to feel what you think about it as well as what I think about it. Of course, always comment down below. And if you want to stay up to date uh, with all of this news, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel as I'm doing my best to get it to you almost as soon as it comes out. Uh, and with some personal experience, having played the game for over 15 years and at a high level and analyzing the game for multiple years, um, try and give you an unbiased opinion from multiple different angles uh, to make sure that you're always picking the right experience for your gameplay. So jumping right off the bat, uh, there's some Moonkin changes. They're not going to be nerfing us as hard as they originally were. Um, with the Solstice talent specifically, it's now only a 50% reduction uh, on its shooting stars, which is still likely in an AoE situation where you're going to take that. They're buffing new moon and half moon's damage, but not full moon. Uh, in PvE... I still feel like it's likely, unlikely that we see it get t uh, selected. In PvP, it's still unlikely to get selected. It's just not doing nearly as much, um, in PvP at least, as much staggeringly high damage as it did in Legion when it was first introduced. I, I feel like a lot of people probably remember Full Moon um, back in its glory days. Uh, it's just, I don't think it's going to be able to hit that point. And for it to hit that point, then it would just overshadow every other talent uh, on the row. Also, Stellar Drift is now 50% increased Starfall damage, but it's going to get a cooldown. But if you want that move while casting feel, this is something that I'm going to try out personally, at least in uh, PvP, maybe some battleground situations, see how much damage the Starfall actually does end up doing. But still, Starfall usually ends up falling a bit flat, at least in PvP, uh, or it just isn't very relevant damage output in pve this could be useful if there's a lot of raid encounters uh, and chains of domination where you're going to need to move and cast so you get an additional benefit and also depending on if there's multiple trash mobs to hit while you're needing to move around the room uh, shadowy embrace for warlocks now specifically about affliction shadow embrace now lasts 16 seconds up from 12 uh, and it can now be applied to everything uh, and this new conduit withering bolt, um, I've been having some talks with people about it, uh, and it apparently is as significant um, as death bolt in PvP. So if you've if you've run death bolt in PvP, the more dots you have on a target, the more damage it does. This is the same idea except with shadow bolt, uh, and this thing could just kind of low key fly under the radar because nobody presses shadow bolt at least in PvP. Uh, in PvE, I feel like it's probably going to be noticed, and that's probably where it'll end up getting nerfed uh, in the first place. Uh, but if it doesn't, if you're an Affliction Warlock, you'll definitely want to at least look at it, depending on if it continues to get nerfed or, or doesn't. And now here's the big change uh, for Mythic Plus that I noticed in this update. They're adding Mythic Plus rating. So like Arena rating, you'll have a Mythic Plus rating in-game. So this is likely to replace Raider.io. Feels bad if you're Raider.io and you, if you've created that website and you want traffic to it, if this ends up replacing it, which it might not, because um, let's just talk about it first. An in-game scoring system based off of personal performance in Mythic Plus Dungeons. So if your tank decides to throw or feed or int or something goes wrong in the key, it's based on your performance, likely to encourage you or discourage you from doing those types of things uh, and try to maximize your own performance. I'm very curious how they're gonna how they're gonna decide that. Is it gonna be based on interrupts landed? Are they gonna be able to base it on damage done? Is it gonna be based on crowd control output? How are we, how exactly are they gonna be able to quantify a personal score for Mythic Plus? Like even as like a tank, like your ability to group up mobs how big your pulls are. It's not as simple as arena where you won, your rating went up, right? It's not like they in arena. Imagine if they based it off your personal performance, right? Maybe it didn't even matter if you failed the key or failed the arena to fail to win the arena. It's like you did the top damage. Now your arena score is high. It's, it seems like they want to keep 
the Raider.io element of where it's like always positive reinforcement, where it's you'll you'll it looks like you would if you did really well individually, you would still get a good score. Is it dependent on if the key is successful or not? Seems like there's going to be more information uh, available also for group updates and creators, but this is this is kind of a big deal because I feel like Raider.io. Uh, some people like it, some people don't like it. My own personal opinion of it is that I don't like that your score never goes down. Um, to me, it almost kind of defeats the purpose of the score. I feel like if you if you don't complete a key or a key is slower, it, maybe you should have like an experience score. Like you've run this dungeon a lot, you're really experienced with it, but then a, a score that's actually based on performance uh, and have them separated. But uh, yeah, other than that, that's my main criticism. Or my main criticism for Raider.io is that oftentimes you can just get a high score from running a key uh, rather than it being only about performance. This is going to be based off performance, though. So I'm curious. I'm curious to see uh, and to see if it incentivizes people to play Mythic Plus more as well. Uh, items and rewards, shards of dominations. This is going to allow you to select gear that is dropped in Sanctum of Domination and can be enhanced by the shards of domination, which can be found by defeating bosses in Sanctum of Domination. The system is still in development; will be updated, so we'll probably have to talk about this in the future. I'm wondering if this will end up uh, being like a Shara's Benthic gear at all, the way that you upgraded it. Um, how much overlap it's going to have with PVP. You remember PVP is going to have item level scaling, so it probably won't. Uh, maybe this will be a nice way of just working on your character in the raid specifically if you didn't want to go outside of it. I, I'm interested to see it. Now jumping into PVP, the first one, and I tried really hard on the PTR to find this, um, new PVP talent for Demon Hunters, Blood Moon. You're already getting uh, a Demon Hunter, or a, your talent reworked called Glimpse, so that now when you're in the air, eventually retreating backwards, you're immune. Um, kind of going back to that old Blade Dance immunity, um, although eventual retreat is an important mobility spell and will also position you oddly uh, in a lot of situations, unlike Blade Dance, which was just used on cooldown and accidentally avoiding stuff. So it's a little bit more deliberate of that mechanic, and I like that mechanic personally. Um, but now you're also getting Blood Moon, and I was th I couldn't find this anywhere. And it's a talent for all Demon Hunters, at least according to this, right? Because it says Demon Hunter, it's not saying a spec specific, uh, called Blood Moon. I was trying to read into the name and I was like, full moon, blood moon. Huh? I I have no idea what this is going to be. And I couldn't find it on the PTR. I don't know if that means that they're going to maybe scrap it. Um, maybe it has something to do with the, like this new brewmaster talent. Um, and obviously brewmaster being the tank spec and it's the PP talent. I checked it out. It now makes it basically say so your clash is kind of AOE and clashes. You charge a target and the target comes to you. Now it'll target multiple people. And I think the purpose of that is for battlegrounds. It, it acts like a Gorfiend's grasp and it can pull multiple targets together. Uh, and then you can blast them down to maybe try and help brewmaster out as a, as a tank in pvp so it could be interesting there a lot of people are cringing when they hear anything to do with tanks in pvp it's not going to be useful in arena um, but in battlegrounds it could be a lot of fun and then hunters are getting a new pvp talent called tranquilizing darts which is now whenever you land an interrupt or you successfully purge a target with uh with tranquilizing shot you will then also reduce the duration of a buff by three seconds so you can reduce a heal over time effect on a druid um, so maybe you're about to go for crowd control you try and purge off life bloom don't get lucky you purge off rejuve but then you reduce the duration of life bloom and life bloom gets removed as well so it kind of it could sometimes give you the opportunity for a double purge uh, and then if you landed an interrupt on that you'd have three purges uh put into hunter so beast mastery is likely going to still be the spec maybe this sylvanas bow that now i've seen reworked which is i don't know if they've decided to classify it as a legendary or not um at first it was just going to be a little bit of random extra aoe damage now it looks like an aoe silence that might have really big implications in pvp maybe they disable it in pvp maybe it's not that long of a silence maybe it's reduced in pvp we don't know um but being able to like silence a mage while you're blasting them and then hit them really hard is going to be very useful uh, in PvP, so you may want to start getting your raiding guild ready as a hunter, because uh, that bow could be a lot of fun and probably super strong uh, if it isn't affected with anything PvP specifically. And here we go. This is the one that everybody's talking about for paladins. Uh, this is the one that I actually can't believe it's real. Uh, it, it seems crazy to me. 
Uh, it's going to be available for all paladins. Judgments of the Pure PvP talent is now available to all specializations. Was protection only. I don't even remember seeing this on protection, but and has been redesigned. Oh, that's why because it's been redesigned. Casting judgment on an enemy cleanses one poison, disease, and magic effect that they applied on allies within your aura. So you can remove devouring plagues with this. You can remove polymorphs with this. You can remove frost novas with this. You. There is so much stuff that you can do as long as the target's within your aura range to remove, which is, I'm imagining a rep paladin now. You can dispel stuns with Sanctuary and you can dispel sheep with judgments. Is this also going to work with uh, Divine Toll? Because Divine Toll casts judgment a bunch of times. Are you just going to pow, 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 and then dispel literally everything off? <laughs> this one seems really bonkers. Um in pvp uh, it's definitely definitely up there uh, for the ones that we've, we've seen so far and then looking at holy specifically uh lights grace pvp talent damage reduction granted by your holy light is now baseline 15 percent um, for five seconds but it no longer stacks uh, and now it also it will only increase your flash of light healing by 25 percent, not your holy light so this is going to get you to spend more mana if you're going to be spamming Flash of Light rather than Holy Light to get the bonuses on that. Maybe they're trying to encourage you to use Flash of Light instead of Holy Light. Often healers end up in this, at least in PvP, they end up in this position where they have two heals to choose from. One might be fast, heals a lot, super mana inefficient. And then the other one is slower, usually heals less, and it's more mana efficient uh, as the trade-off. But then the healers just end up pressing only one of those two options because they end up not having a weakness and the other one doesn't, right? So Flash of Light's fast, but it doesn't really heal a lot uh, and it costs a lot more mana. Whereas Holy Light is slow, heals a lot and doesn't cost as much mana. So you probably want to, if you're going to cast, you probably want to use Holy Light. I don't know if this will get Paladins casting Flash of Light still because your main problem is still running out of mana. Um, and this kind of, if anything, makes the talent a lot worse. I guess you could still use Divine Favor with a Flash of Light instead of a Holy Light. Your Holy Light is getting buffed baseline in PvP on a previous change. If you want to check out that video, I'll have it linked at the end of the video. Um, so your Holy Light healing is being distributed just baseline outside of this talent a bit, but slightly nerfed. And uh, this might be to try and tune it so that you're using uh, more heals in general. Retribution Paladin is receiving quite a lot here. Uh, Aura of Reckoning PvP talent. Damage bonus for the next auto attack reduced to 200%. So... Not a really a big deal on the auto attack damage. And the Paladin now gains one additional stack if the Paladin is the victim of one critical strike rather than two. And I think this is because there were other classes like Demon Hunters that when they I-beam, they crit all the I-beam and boom, 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 boom. You've proc Aura of Reckoning just immediately on a rep Paladin. It was like a really big counter. Uh, it wasn't one that people really were aware of. I wasn't even personally aware of until recently. Uh, so this is probably so that you don't get stacks as fast against classes that toss out a bunch of crits in a very small amount of time that aren't really meaningful crits. I don't think that's it was its an intention. So a slight nerf to its proc rate against those classes. Um, and now also ultimate retribution PVP talent has been redesigned. You can mark an enemy player for retribution. After they kill an ally within your retribution aura, if the marked enemy is slain within eight seconds, cast Redemption on the Fallen Ally. So I think they're trying to get you to use Retribution Aura. What's crazy about this is that this is like res in PvP. So if you mark the target... Wait a minute, I'm misreading this. Mark an enemy player for Retribution after they kill an ally within your Retribution Aura. If the marked enemy is slain within eight seconds, cast Redemption on a fallen ally. Is this only going to be Battlegrounds? This is a lot worse than I originally read it because I thought that this meant if... I thought originally this was if you marked a target, that target killed your ally, you could res that ally if they killed him while that debuff was up. But now this sounds more like if you mark a target and kill it, you can then just res somebody in combat which is very situational in arena in, in a battleground. I mean, that could be really useful um, being able to just skip an entire res timer and get somebody alive um, could be useful. 
it's kind of tough to if you were like purposely relying on this to proc retribution or and then res them it's that's like a really risky gamble to take that one's not as impressive as i originally was thinking it was in arena maybe there's cross kill if you were about to kill a target and their team kill, was about to kill your target and then you killed them at the same time but then you could res them also is it instant cast it says cast redemption I, I'm only going to assume that it's instant cast, but it might not be. This talent doesn't seem as good as I was originally looking at it. Uh, Lawbringer for PvP has been slightly redesigned. Damage increased to 10% of your maximum health, and the debuff duration increased to one minute, uh, but no longer deals its damage to the primary target of your judgment. It was 5% maximum health debuff in the last 45 seconds. It could be repeated on the same target to deal damage bonus onto that target. So you're going to get more AoE damage but not to your main target. That's a big nerf. I, Divine Toll was scaling with Lawbringer, if I'm not mistaken, so you're not going to proc Lawbringer on that. It's still going to be good just pad damage in Battlegrounds, maybe even still worth it in Arena. Yeah, it's, it's about bursting and killing people in a one-shot, so maybe not. Um, it's going to help you a lot in Battlegrounds. I mean, maybe this is all about trying to make Rhett better in Battlegrounds because 10% of someone's maximum health and you get that on multiple people every time you're judgmenting and if it works with divine toll and if it works with a divine toll legendary that allows you to judgment more frequently just without even doing anything it could be a lot of fun in the battleground uh, in arena it's probably a more of a nerf um, because it's not going to affect the target you're actually trying to hit uh, vengeance aura for a pvp talent has been slightly redesigned critical strike chance bonus per stack increased to six percent stacking two times and no longer grants increased holy damage was three percent damage and crits chance before stacking up to four times so losing out on the holy damage is gonna you're gonna lose out on stacking that with your final verdict hits with the legendary um, and maybe this is gonna kind of tone down the top end holy damage burst um, but you were gonna crit more 12 percent crit i don't know it's even less crit this one's Seems like it just got nerfed outright, so Vengeance are not looking as good as before. And then Cleansing Light, uh, which I believe is just dispelling the poisons, has been removed. Um, so for Rep Paladin, looks like they're trying to make you better in Battlegrounds, tone down some of your top end damage. That was a lot to talk about, so just summarize it really quickly. Uh, for Priest, Thought Steel is now actually going to have uh, a proper cooldown on the ability you've taken, so people aren't accidentally pressing it. That's great. Uh, and then also you're going to have a new PP talent for Discipline Priest, Inner Light and Darkness. And when I looked at this, it was basically two two things you could activate with a 15-second cooldown. You could switch between them. You could almost think of them like shape shifts or auras. Uh, one of them was reduced mana cost on your healing spells. The other one was increased atonement healing and damage. So you can flip between when you really need mana management or when you want to get extra damage. That has some really cool playability. I liked it uh, when I looked at it. And now Searing Light, PvP talent, has been renamed to Blaze of Light and has been redesigned. It increases the damage of Smite and Penance by 15%. And Penance, in and penance increases or decreases your target's movement speed. So you could sprint somebody by 40% for two seconds. But now it's not going to reduce the cooldown of Penance. So you're not going to be as efficient with this talent. This talent made you very efficient. Uh, you'll have to likely take the Inner Light and Darkness talent uh, instead if you want to be more efficient and play with the Inner Light version. Ultimate Radiance is being nerfed, so your instant healing with Radiance to top people off is being nerfed. What's really odd to me about this is that they're targeting these big instant heals um, and big heals from Paladin as well, but they're not targeting the healing on the hybrid DPS, which to me is a more of a more of a problem in PvP uh, than the healing on the healers, because at least when a Discipline Priest does this massive heal with Radiance, they go out of mana. Feral Druid when they cast Regrowth. It's not going out of mana. Paladin, Rep Paladin casting Word of Glory. It's not going out of mana. And it's about as much healing. So it's a little bit odd. Maybe they're trying to get you to play different talents. Maybe a lot of people were running this. But uh, you may want to drop it. Uh, it just might not be worth the mana anymore. Uh, Trinity, the PvP talent, no longer increases atonement damage uh, and to healing transfer by 20%. And the critical strike chance of smite, penance, and shadow fiend has been increased by to 30%, so 5% crit buff to some of your spells. Uh, but your atonement's damage to healing transfer has been increased just flat out in all situations. So you don't have to take Trinity. You're taking Trinity for the crits. I think it's because they're likely expecting you to drop Trinity and then take inner light and darkness with this change. Um, it's going to add an extra keybind. 
uh, to your overall play style. It might help you out with your mana situations when you're needing to spam Shadow Men with Inner Light, uh, and then it will also in amplify your damage and your burst when you switch to Inner Darkness instead. So maybe some cool playability there for Discipline. Uh, Holy Cardinal Mending PvP Talent has been redesigned, increasing the healing to prayer mending by 50% and its jump range by 10 yards. I think this is actually a slight nerf in Arena. It used to be based on your percentage of health. Now it's just 50% healing increased of a small amount, although it's likely going to scale better with any conduits um, and potential legendaries that could synergize the prayer mending. So take that into account if you want to play Holy Priest. Uh, Miracle Worker, Holy Word Serenity, cooldown reduced by 20% was 25, so you're not going to be getting Serenity as frequently. Again, targeting those big instant heals, which I'm personally a fan of in PvP because when they're so prevalent, it's kind of just like you get do a ton of damage, you get a lot of work done, and then target's full hailed and almost feels like laying hands is in the game um so i'm not a i'm a fan of changes like this i just they're targeting the healers and not the hybrids so that's my only concern greater heal is getting a three second cooldown reduction and now will also ignore healing reduction effects still a really big deal to just sit there and cast greater heal for a long time um before it was strong because you just sat there and spammed it you played with classes that needed to be interrupted so they couldn't interrupt you and you just sat there spamming it now you still can't spam it but you get a really big heal. I don't know if I would be personally attracted to that as a holy priest. Uh, Divine Ascension, the one where you fly up in the air, has now also going to increase the range of your spells by 50% while you are in flight. I mean, in a battleground, being able to just shoot things all over the place sounds fun. Is it super competitive? I mean, maybe you could like pull somebody. Like maybe somebody's at, like, at a different base and that's not going to be that far of a range. It would have been cool if it was that far if it's super broken. <laughs> Live grab somebody all the way from a different base into your base or something. There's no way it'll be that much range. So it's just kind of mad that talent's still likely just taken for fun. Uh, and they're nerfing uh, Greater Fade in PvP by one second on its duration. This also applies to Shadow, so it's only lasting for three seconds. I think a 45-second cooldown Ice Block is really good, so uh, making it only three seconds is is a bit more fair and also your flash healing is increased by 15 percent pvp combat again this seems to me like they're trying to spread your healing out so you're using all of the buttons uh, rather than only spamming one specifically but this one will also run you out of mana instead of using heal uh so similar kind of problem with holy paladin now looking at elemental they listened to some feedback on this new talent they brought in which is the static field totem They've updated the animation. It's a big lightning circle with a totem, and anyone that tries to leave gets pulled back into the totem. Super fun mechanic. I really like these mechanics that are like anti-defense, where other teams are just focusing on running away and hiding the whole time. These talents that can like lock people in place or knock them away from uh, pillars or prevent them from retreating to pillars. I really like these ideas. Whether or not they actually work, we'll have to see, because they look really cool, and I like the idea. But then when it's actually practically used, will it work? The totem got buffed. Its health is now based on your health, 10% of your health. So it's about as hard to kill as a healing tide, which is it's just pretty hard. So if you're an Ellie Shaman and you lock a whole team down in this uh, little static field and your team is just zapping them, that could be really fun. It's Ellie only. Uh, also, you will get seasoned wins, which this one didn't make sense to me because I feel like Shaman in general, at least Ellie and Enhancement, don't care about magic damage. It's basically if you land wind shear, you're going to take 20% less damage from the school of magic you've interrupted. So if you don't fire, you're taking 20% less fire damage. I would have thought that they would want some physical damage reduction to deal with rogues and melee. So it has just seemed kind of like weird that you're getting more magic damage reduction. Um,. I mean, if you're wind sharing a frost mage a lot and they're doing 20% less damage, they're not going to be too happy about that. Uh, but this talent seemed kind of out of nowhere and not really what enhancement at least needed, let alone Ellie. Uh, elemental atonement, the extra maelstrom is gone. Uh, and then for restoration, the living tide, they've buffed it now. It's going to reduce the cooldown of healing tide. It's a one and a half minute cooldown and it heals a truck ton. So healing tide is actually a button you'll care about pressing. It'll be very relevant. 
Resto Shaman needed some help in PvP, so I really like this. It also helps you in Rated Battlegrounds. I think this Healing Rain change is also aimed somewhat at Rated Battlegrounds and also aimed at the Cleansing Waters talent, so you can dispel with Healing Rain. So you'll get that buffed. And then the Spirit Link PP talent has been removed. That one's always been problematic for a really long time, so I'm personally happy to see that it's gone. Uh, now we've got new Rune Carving Powers for Demon Hunters and Paladins um, coming into the next update. So overall for PvP, truck ton of changes. Uh, for Holy Discipline, uh, for Holy Paladin, Holy Priest, I said, pri said Priest. Um, so it seems like they're redistributing the healing on those classes. Discipline is going to be pretty cool with this inner light and darkness. I'm super stoked for that. This Judgment of the Pure thing just sounds like complete chaos. I don't really think this is necessary um, on any Paladin spec. It seems a bit over the top. Affliction could slip under the radar with this really powerful Shadow Bolt. Uh, and then Mythic Plus Rating could be a, a pretty cool experience or maybe not the best depending on how they iterate on it and this seems really like how are they going to personally score you how do the what metrics are they going to use to do that this seems like there's a lot of unanswered questions for that one but it could be interesting for me the plus player so if you enjoyed this 9.1 ptr update again please like the video comment down below with your thoughts uh, about what's going on if you're interested in checking out 9.1 what you're doing to prepare for it and subscribe to the channel just let you know when these uh, updates go live and other than that thank you very much for watching i will see you in the next video